and welcome to another episode of Vuvar. In today's episode, we are going to interview Jeremy Daly. If you're interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> So today I'm very happy, happy new year and thank you for staying tuned to Full Bar in 2019 and we are starting a new series with the new years. We are going to start a series that will take around January and it's interviews that I prepared during Rainbend and I was interviewing this really amazing serverless people that are referenced in the serverless community and they agreed to spend some time with me and get an interview done. So today we have the first interview that is with Jeremy Daly and I will link a playlist where I will put all the interviews in the card and in the description box so you can go and check all the interviews that will come in the following week. And don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned. So Jeremy is an amazing serverless advocate. He has a really cool blog and he has work. Uh, he does a lot of open source and also he has a newsletter with a lot of really interesting topics. So. If you don't know him, you should go and check out his content. I will leave all the links to Jeremy's work and to social profiles of Jeremy in the description box so you can go and check it out. So now let's go to the interview. Nice to have you in my interview. Uh, thank you so much for having First me. First guest of it. the week. Oh, okay. So nice. I'm very happy. Nice. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Jeremy Daly. I'm the CTO at a company called Alert Me in New York. I actually work out of Boston, but um, I've uh, been working with serverless since pretty much Lambda went GA in 2015 okay. and a uh, big fan of the serverless framework. I've uh, <laughs> been using that since the beginning, basically since uh, 0.5, nah, I think, like me. <laughs> 0 .5. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm excited to be here. It's my first reInvent, yes. um, a lot of great people, it's just, uh, it's been crazy, a lot of walking, very tired, but, um, <laughs> but other than that, it's great. Cool. So talking about serverless, sure. uh, I want to know why why you got started with serverless? What it got your attention? You know, it was kind of funny. I was working for a company. I was the CTO at a, a company that was doing a mobile app um, and was working with a bunch of publishers. Uh, and we got to this point where we acquired another company that was doing a lot of a uh, lot of data uh, lookups on products with. Um, Cassandra, which was, you know, Cassandra rings. And uh, I just happened to stumble across Lambda. It was announced uh, and I was looking at it and we were having problems scaling our uh, scaling our front end to deal with the, the different data. So uh, we put together a solution using Lambda and um, uh, Elastic Hash. Because uh, there was Reddit. no API gateway. There was no that. API yeah. gateway. Yeah. So we were able to kind of mix and match this thing with our own cluster <laughs> of, of Redis servers and um, and it worked really, it worked really, really well. Um, and then, of course, things as things started, they announced more things and the API gateway, and then you know, eventually VPCs and all this kind of stuff. So I just every every opportunity I've had to build something new or go in and consult for companies, uh, I've been looking at looking at them and saying, why don't you try this serverless thing because <laughs> it will reduce your costs, it will be much easier to manage, and you don't have to get a phone call at three o'clock in the morning when a server goes down. Um, and generally, I used to be the guy who got that call, oh. so it. Um, so you it are all pro serverless. Yes. yes. <laughs> Cool. So, but what is the biggest challenges of going serverless? Um, because there's still a lot of things. Yeah. No. So I think is a is sort of this paradigm yeah. shift where people are thinking about it. Um, you know, people are so used to CRUD apps. You know, the create, read, update, and delete apps, where it's simple. You call an API, and then it does some change for you, and it writes it to the database, and you get a response, and everything's fine. Um, I think when you start moving to serverless, you're looking at things. You're more like the CQRS pattern, and <laughs> and you're looking at things where you need to start thinking of event-driven stuff. So you're capturing data, your events become the source of truth, um, your database, I don't want to say it's secondary, but you, you're, you're denormalizing data now, you're not using just a regular exactly. SQL database or a MySQL database, and you're looking at something like DynamoDB or you're using Kinesis streams. So there's a lot of change to think about. So I think many people, when they first go to serverless, they say, hey, um, let me just build a monolith on a Lambda function using uh, Express or something like yes. that. Um, and that's how they get started, and I think that's that's fine, but I do think to go to that next level, there's a big, a big learning. What do you think there. about like the asynchronous thinking? Because I think that's very hard for backend developers. I, They're so I, used yeah. to being able to debug their code and exactly. to be able to trace everything. Yeah. 
yeah. and then from one moment to another, like poof, it goes yeah. and it's yeah. And I mean, and that's not new to serverless either. I mean, that's yeah. a microservices thing, and yeah. that's where you know people have been kind of thinking that way for a while. But I don't think most people are building microservices no. either. I think no, most no. people are building these small little yeah. monoliths, and they're happy with yeah. those, and they're using Ruby on Rails, or they're using Laravel, or even or Java. But or, it's like yeah, exactly. Still, um, they're little monoliths. <laughs> but the asynchronous piece of it, you're right. Yes. I mean, all of a sudden to say, okay, an event happened, I captured that exactly. event, and now I've distributed that, and now there's a whole sort of chain reaction of things that need to exactly. happen, and not being able to follow that along is frustrating. So <laughs> yeah. that's why you know a lot of these observability because tools that are coming out. In my out. team, that was the hardest thing to think yes. asynchronously. It yes. was like. <laughs> oh, now we kick it and uh, what? <laughs> we need to listen to it or how will we get it back? <laughs> what you will tell to people that are starting to adopt oh, serverless? Oh, okay, people that where, are new to serverless. Where yeah, they will okay. put their focus on, where it's a good point to start or what are good technologies or yeah. good techniques or good architecture. Yeah, so for, for me, I think uh, a lot of times when people, I'm, I'm getting very sick of the hello world examples because it doesn't tell you enough no. and it doesn't give you the full um, the full piece of it there. I think that... Uh, you, you, you don't want to start at the hello world thing, but you also don't want to start at the <laughs> 75 different services yeah. connected with yeah. different Migrating blue and that kind of stuff. Migrating your most critical <laughs> application exactly. to serverless. Exactly. So I, I really like, um, uh, I'm actually working with one client now where we're talking about taking their admin, this is weird, just get attacked by a bird. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, so I'm working with one client now that um, we're taking their admin component okay. and we're going to move that into a microservice away from their monolith. And so what we're doing is building that out is, uh, is you know, using Lambda, yeah. uh, using AWS, obviously, and, uh, and uh, using the serverless framework to do deployments for it. Uh, but then, and then using NoSQL database to store some of that information, but then using uh, API gateway to route yes. to certain traffic there, right? Which is the strangler pattern, if you're familiar with microservices. Exactly. And so, uh, so that's my suggestion, is take a piece of the application that you can split out, yeah. even if it has to communicate with your old monolith for now, but then start routing some of that traffic. And as you become more comfortable with those patterns and with those ideas, then you can start moving down the line. But some of these things that are like, you know, zero to no. 60, that's too much. And, and that the hello world is too any low. refactor. Go little Absolutely. by little. Don't exactly. try to tackle yeah. everything yeah. in one pull request because it will be a mess. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> in, in some cases, you don't even need to rebuild your monolith. Like, you don't have to migrate everything to that. Like, if you want to add new functionality, um, Lambda at Edge is adding all kinds of new stuff. Exactly. You can interrupt um, these things. You can use that strangler pattern and, and route certain requests to different parts of your, uh, you know, different parts of your infrastructure. So there's ways that you can just start adding value with serverless exactly. that yeah. doesn't require you to go and rethink the way that you run your business. And sometimes you rewrite the critical parts to take advantage of the benefits of the cloud, like the edge. Absolutely. That is something Absolutely. I think yep. serverless takes so much value out yep. of it. Definitely. Definitely. I think I heard so many times like, oh, if I go serverless, I go vendor locking. Have you heard that? Uh, yes, of course. What do you would tell to people? So that that? Um, I have, I've always, I kind of wanted to issue this challenge, but I don't have the time to do it. <laughs> I want to say to some enterprise team, you know, some, you know, 10 person team that just spent a year and a half building some sort of large application and creating all of this boilerplate stuff that they had to do and say, give me what you built in the last year and a half and I think I could rebuild a prototype with serverless or with Lambda and managed yeah. functions in like two weeks, yes. right? Because you're not you're not reinventing the wheel. No, you don't need to worry about authentication systems. You don't. I mean, you worry about these things, but not building them because exactly. there's these services. And you trust. And you trust. Yeah, I mean, exactly. This, Lambda's not going. Exactly. AWS. I, I don't know. This has got to be a billion dollar exactly. conference. There's so <laughs> much going on. It's crazy. They're not going away tomorrow. They're laying fiber underneath the the ocean. You know what I mean? They're exactly. creating their own network. They're not going away. And so they keep getting cheap with the things that they do. They keep getting more innovative with the different solutions they offer. And so are you locked into a vendor? Sort of, but I mean, if you choose any database, you're kind of locked into that, right? So you might be locked into Cassandra or you might be locked into SQL or Oracle or whatever. Um, but with serverless, I, I think you can just build things so fast yes. and add so much value so quickly that worst case scenario, if you had to rewrite your whole application it would take you for another, another two weeks, take you another two weeks. And I mean, a little more than that, but but honestly, but yeah, I think it's I yeah. think it's um, uh, you make a you 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 trade that in now. You're not locked in in the sense that you your you, your whole business runs on it, exactly. but you can move quickly and um, you know and, and you can build something very fast and figure out whether or not it's even worth building exactly. what you were trying and to build. And also, if you follow my microservice patterns, it's mm -hmm. very easy to replace one to put another one. Absolutely. So you are not really locked Absolutely. in. Absolutely, it will yep. take you a couple of weeks or months yep. just to replace that. So. Well, and, and just as a, an example, so uh, alert me. We do uh, natural language processing on uh, publisher articles, so news articles and things like that. Uh, so right now we're 
everything is on AWS except for our uh, natural language processing. So we do use Comprehend for some stuff, but we also use IBM Watson's yeah. API. We use Google Cloud. Um, so we use a number of different services, and we just but we run our compute on yeah. uh, AWS. But if we needed to move stuff to Google Functions tomorrow or Azure Functions, we could do it. It would be a little bit of a pain, but it wouldn't be a two-year migration. Excellent. It wouldn't cost us millions of dollars. So, um, so I think that there's enough flexibility there, and there's enough benefit to being locked in. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? That it's, it's yeah, worth it. Yeah, exactly. So. And, and you always have to analyze your risks. Of course, like, of course. And then saying uh, your burn the locking is just very naive. Yes, yes. It's, like, Absolutely. I don't like when the people tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about the future of serverless? Where do you see it's going? Mm, I don't know. So I, was, <laughs> I, so I think it's going to become a much more critical piece of the way that companies operate. I mean, if you look at uh, some of the talks I've been to um, this week, there have been sort of cus or customers that have explained what they've done with it. And um, it's in, in almost every case, it's reduced you know, their complexity. Uh, it saved them money. Um, it made everything go so much faster to do it. And, and I look at that and I say, if businesses catch on to that and they start using this pattern uh, and start adopting serverless, then I think you're going to see a lot of workloads that even if they don't necessarily fit perfectly into yes. the serverless sort of mindset or paradigm, um, we'll, they'll find ways to rethink them so that they can. Yes. Um, and that'll be, a not, that'll be a good enough exercise because, or be a worthwhile exercise, because they'll be able to save so much money and speed up the development. And when you get away from working on, like we said, all these boilerplates and reinventing the wheel, um, and you're just focusing on business logic and yes. business value, uh, I mean, that, that, that's the future to me, is just, is, you know, give, putting, putting business logic at the top, top of your development stack as opposed to saying, hey, you know, we've got to work on all this stuff and set up all these clusters and do all this stuff for the next six months just so we can write one piece of Excellent. code for, for our me, business. For me, at the end, it will be cloud and serverless will be the same. I, I think you're right, yes. Everything will yep. be managed services yep. at the end. Yep. Not yet. Sure, yep. there will be some infrastructure, but I, I have the feeling that that's where Amazon also wants to go. Mm -hmm. Because they throw all these managed services every Although time. And they did announce all the bare metal yeah, instances because, too, because some people still yeah. want to be able to run. And there is a lot but, of yeah. enterprise moving to of cloud, course. but but yeah. in the end, like many years, <laughs> <laughs> it might not be that far off. But yeah, it's it's going to be a while. There's still a lot of. I yes. mean, as it is right now, I think cloud is a hundred billion dollar business, yes. uh, and IT is a multi trillion dollar business. Yes. So there's still a lot of on site uh, and on prem so much. stuff. Uh, there's people that don't even know what the cloud no. is still. I mean, it's so it's we've got a long way yeah, to go. There but, is uh, a lot of work to do. I, I, I do <laughs> hope that people that are not on the cloud now, as they start to think about moving to it, they skip over containers yes. and they go right to serverless. <laughs> well, I was in South America and they mm -hmm. are moving from like prem to serverless directly. Yeah, when, and you know what, that makes sense because if you think exactly. about people that are kind of the laggards, right, that, that kind of are behind, I mean, you jump, you, you skip over exactly. technology, that intermediary technology. Uh, in the United States, we everything new that comes mm. out, we have to buy it and use it <laughs> and we go through it and we all go through the pains of it. Right. And then eventually we get to a better solution and then other countries are like, we'll just use the better solution. Exactly. You know? Why, why so, to go um, to the yeah, past? Exactly. We're like the test, we're like a, you know, we're like the test engine, so. Yeah. Tell me about your experience in reInvent, how it's going and oh. what is your feeling for the whole week because we still have three days ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it through the next three days because <laughs> my feet are killing me. Uh, but it's I a wore... very accessible place, you can wear a wheelchair. Oh, that should. <laughs> I might need to. Um, yeah, the first day I was here, I walked like 10 and a half miles, so that's like... 20 kilometers. 20 kilometers, or so whatever that is, yeah. So, it, and I, you know, 21,000 steps. Um, so, this place is this place is huge. The the event is spread out over seven different hotels. Um, the talks have been really, really good. I've met so many amazing people, uh, people that I interact with on Twitter and stuff like yes. that. And, uh, and like get, us? Like, exactly, yeah. And get to meet them finally and, uh, and have some good chats. And um, it's just, it's great. It's so, I mean, this is... This is a great time for anybody who is sort of an AWS fanatic yes. and is looking for that kind of stuff. Um, you know, again, there's there's a lot of other cloud providers out there. I just and and you know, Google's doing great things and Azure's yeah. doing great things, but Amazon is just pushing. Yes. They just got their foot on the on the gas and they are they're just driving forward and it's it's great to see and the the excitement around here is just amazing. It's crazy, it's yeah. a crazy conference. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for having for me for your time. And this was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. I'm really interested. If you like this concept of videos, I would like to get your opinion and thumbs up are a great way to know if I should keep doing more because I would love to do a new series, maybe in the middle of the year with more interviews of serverless advocates and serverless reference people. But uh, 
I don't know, I'm open to suggestions to really cool people you will be interested in hearing from, so leave them in the comment box below. And around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So, I see you in the next episode of Uvar. Ciao, ciao!